Good morning. It is March 13th, 2024. This is episode 105 of the Paul Green Comedy Podcast, a podcast by a dreamer for dreamers. And stand-up comedian and actor, improviser here, following along on my journey towards my dreams in hopes that perhaps I might instill some wisdom or some inspiration, maybe a cautionary tale or two, (laughs) to anybody out there who has a dream and is pursuing one as well, because that is what I am in the midst of in my life. And I'll tell you, I had myself quite a night last night, and... It's still just unpacking how grateful I am for uh, what I experienced. So about six, seven years ago, when I actually, when I first moved out to Los Angeles, I had met a comedy teacher, or excuse me, not a comedy teacher, an acting teacher, through a very random series of events, I I when I first moved out to LA, I was submitting a lot. Um, and as a new actor, you can really only submit for non-union uh, indie type projects, you know. So you get a lot of student films, you get a lot of uh, indie productions, productions that don't have really any budget, so they can't afford to hire, you know, famous union actors because they can't really afford them. And they're usually on shoestring budgets if they have a budget at all. Sometimes it's just somebody with a, you know, with a camera and a dream. And they're trying to produce and make projects for any sort of distribution. Most of the time it's, you know, it's like they have a YouTube channel and they're just trying to get some YouTube footage type stuff. And... I did so many of those projects when I first moved out to L.A., tons of student films, tons of these little indie projects where I would, like, show up to the film shoot and and there would just be, like, just one guy with a camera, no crew, you know, no no lighting, no anything. And, you know, and, and I was happy to do those because, again, you know, I just looked at it as me gaining experience and building a reel and, heck, you know, I was in Hollywood and grinding and figuring it out. And so um, I got booked on this random indie project and to play like a homeless guy. <laughs> and um, so anyway, so I, I booked this again. It's an indie project. It's, you know, n- not anything that was going to end up on Netflix or anything. And I show up to this table read and there was this woman there who seemed to be tangentially involved in the project, although I remember at the time not really understanding how, but she just sort of s- seemed to be there. And, um, you know, so anyway, so we showed up and we did this table read and had a good time, and then I started talking to this woman. Her name is Constance, and... Turns out that she was and is an acting teacher. And so I started just talking to her about my goals and my um, ambitions about moving out to L.A. And, man, I haven't thought about when I met her for a long, long time. But as I'm talking about it, I'm just remembering a few elements of that conversation that now almost nine, eight, nine years later is resurfacing because now remember I was new to LA so I was still very ambitious I hadn't had the shit kicked out of me yet (laughs) and I remember her saying something like you know the universe only sends me actors who are destined to do great things. And I looked at her and I said, I feel like I'm destined to do, to do great things. And she looked at me and she said, you are. 
Man. I had totally forgotten that. Totally forgotten that. So I ended up taking her acting class. And I learned from that acting class that not only is she an acting teacher, that she's actually a talent manager and that she manages uh, ch children actors. And some of the talent that she manages have done some huge, huge things. I I remember about four or five years ago driving down Sunset Boulevard and seeing a large billboard with one of her actors who was in class with who was in a class with me, um, seeing her picture on this massive billboard for this uh, TV show that she had booked. I say TV show, it was, I think, on maybe Netflix or maybe, I don't remember, you know, you know, everything's streaming now, but, um, and that same actress has gone on to do incredible things, and many of her, the, the, the childhood actors that she manages have done big TV shows, big movies, big projects. And I actually saw a, um, about four or five months ago, an Instagram video popped up on her Instagram. So this acting teacher's Instagram, where she announced, I probably can't even, I probably shouldn't even mention what the project is. Um, but one of the actors is, let's just say he is playing a biopic and he is playing one of the most iconic people of the last hundred years. Um, like globally known, um, person. <laughs> and this again childhood actor I don't know how old he is he can't be more than maybe 16 or 17 years old who's who is in class with Constance and um I actually don't know if she manages this this actor but I know that he was in his class and it, it was announced that this actor was going to be playing again one of the most iconic human beings you can possibly think of um uh, all in the entertainment industry, I'll at least narrow it down to that. You know, he's not playing like a politician or a Hitler or something like that. So just think of who are some of the most iconic entertainment figures I could possibly think of. And if you just started rattling off a list, there's a good chance they would be the first person you would think of. And if they weren't the first person, they, they would definitely you would get to them very, very fast like that level of iconic. And so I took acting classes from her and, you know, they were once a week and I'd show up and, um, you know, ugh, I can't even describe it. It was, she's, she is such a, You know, it's it's like I went there for acting, but it, it, it every class was like life lesson, like master classes in life, master classes in in spirituality and attitude and character and personality and discipline and craft and commitment and yet uh, man, it, it she she is one of the most like big minded human beings that that I can think of you think of you know like when somebody says oh well they're small minded it's like whatever the antithesis of small minded is she is so universally expansive in how she approaches her craft as a manager and as a teacher and how she instills those principles in, in her actors and 
and in her clients. And so I studied with her for a couple of years and somewhere around 2018, I started to feel like I needed to really be focusing a lot harder on stand-up comedy, which has happened so many times in my life, which is so fascinating because I never wanted to do stand-up. It was never my main focus. I wanted to do acting. I love doing improv acting. I love doing scenes. I love doing character work. I love I love when somebody hands me a script and I get to read it and try to interpret it. And stand up is just such an entirely different skill set and is so much more vulnerable. It, you know, stand up it's like it's just me up there talking about me. It's like here's my thoughts, here's my opinions. And by the way, I'm supposed to be funny every 15 to 30 seconds. The audience should be laughing. I mean, the pressure it, it is Stand up has always been a huge challenge for me, and but again, some some around maybe twenty eighteen or so, I really felt compelled to turn my focus to stand up, and you know, I remember like one night I had an opportunity to either go to acting class or I had this stand up comedy gig. And I remember feeling like, oh, well, I need to take this the, the stand-up comedy gig. But that also sort of indicated to me, it's like, oh, well, well, obviously stand-up is, is my priority. And so anyway, so I had stopped taking classes, but I would, I always kept close to Constance and her class, at least you know, spiritually and, and energetically. And I think there were a couple of times where, you know, I would drop in and surprise her, um, you know, you know, randomly, but, um, but it, it's, it has been years since I'd really seen her or talked to her. And anyway, so, you know, I've been out here in Los Angeles this week for this, um, sh uh, for this TV show that I booked and, I really wanted to just drop in and surprise her and just show up to her class. And so that's what I did last night. So I showed up and saw her and surprised her and was able to give her a big hug. And then I sat in on the class and was able to um, multiple times throughout the class provide my thoughts and my insights on the scenes. And man, <laughs> just being in that energy again and just being reminded of how she approaches the world, how she approaches God and the universe and acting and her craft and, you know, teaching. And, man, I, you know, I, I was so inspired it was really emotional. I, I got emotional a lot th through through the through the class. People wouldn't have known that. It's not like I was outwardly sobbing, but I was just so grateful to still be connected her to her and to that energy. And I and I have never really left. And at the end of the class, obviously, I went back up, you know, and uh, gave her a hug, and you know, just we were able to talk for few moments, not a lot. And she just said, you know, it's just so great to see you. And, you know, what a great surprise. And, and I just said, you know, I think about you and this class all the time. And I do, I think about it a lot and what I had learned and, um, a lot of the, again, a lot of those life lessons, you know, the acting, obviously, I learned a ton, but it really was just more her, her philosophy and theories on on life and all of that stuff. And man, it was so great. Um, I got to watch her students put on a number of scenes, and they were so great. I laughed so hard. I was so engrossed in the the talent of her, um, of her actors and just, just a huge blessing to be there. 
and to reconnect with her. And so it's, it's been a very interesting week. It's been a very interesting week to really, to be back in LA for an extended period of time. I've, I've been back to LA a number of times since moving back to Phoenix, but it it always seemed like it was for like a day or two, you know, just kind of in and out and this was really the first time that I had an extended stay and had an opportunity again to go to Constance's class. And I'll tell you, there really is an energy that is pulling me back here, which is really fascinating to me. And I have a bit of a resistance to it because I'm just so happy and so comfortable in Arizona and, um, you know, California is just not an easy place to live. <laughs> it's just such a pain in the ass. I, I just always remember thinking that. I was like, it's just like California wants to punish you for the right to live in its state. <laughs> I mean, the taxes are high and the parking is abysmal and the traffic is abysmal and the and the bureaucracy. You know, I, I lived out in Pasadena. And just for me to park on my street was, I had to get this parking permit and I go through the parking permitting office, which was just a pain in the ass. And, you know, I had to get like my roommates, like car registrations and I couldn't get screenshots of them. I had to go get photocopies. And so I had to go to like Staples and actually photocopy their, their things. And then I had to fill out this long application and I had to go stand in this line at the application office and there were like a couple years that I would forget because they would only last for one year and then when the year would expire uh you know I would forget and then they would come by and ticket me so now I got like a $70 ticket I mean like and all of this just so I can park in front of my own apartment in California (laughs) like I don't even have a parking spot (laughs) and you have to pay for plastic I remember the first time I went to a Target in Pasadena, and it's like, if you want a plastic bag, it's 10 cents per plastic bag. And, you know, and the gas is so much more expensive than Arizona, and everything is just harder. And, you know, you have to pay so much more in rent for such for such little or less real estate than what you can get in Arizona and all of that, you know. And, uh... So, I don't know, though. It's just been interesting that in the last week, my comedian friend, you know, turns me on to this apartment that I could theoretically rent for really, really cheap. And I went and saw it over the weekend, and it's a complete garbage dump of a place. But that's what you get in L.A., and it's actually affordable compared to what, is typically the case in LA, which is a garbage dump that isn't affordable. So I'm actually getting a huge deal on this garbage dump. But if I wasn't getting that deal, I would have to pay three times as much for a comparable garbage dump. Um, <laughs> and uh, so, so I don't know, dreamers. I don't know. But just being out here again going to class, getting booked on a film shoot in L.A. so randomly has really started to get me thinking. And I even had a a buddy of mine, my my buddy Dave Thurston, like two weeks ago, we had this meeting about a comedy show we want to do. And he just pulls me aside. He's like, Paul, you need to get back to L.A., get the hell out of Phoenix. I'm just going like, wait, what? Well, huh? Like, why is everybody saying this? I'm, I'm happy here in Phoenix. I'm comfortable here in Phoenix. I get booked in Phoenix. I have friends and family in Phoenix. I get to hang out with my mom every week. I get to see my dad every day, like get to see my brothers and you know, like I, man. So I don't know. I don't know, dreamers. It's been it's been an interesting couple of days, so I am gonna really have to wrap my head around what it might look like to potentially move back here. 
and uh, see why I'm see if I can figure out where that pull is coming from. And I don't know. I just don't want to do anything rash. Me moving back to Phoenix was a very rash, uh, not thought out, uh, reckless decision on my part. And so I am a little hesitant to make a rash, hesitant, reckless decision to return to L.A., but just being out here and being reconnected to the energy of acting and the industry and Constance, who's like, oh, yeah, I was at dinner with the CEO of uh, Lionsgate tonight. I'm going, huh, okay. You know, I have two buddies who have a film with Lionsgate. That's interesting. And... And then in walks, uh, in walks Sanaya, who, uh, you know, who I've seen on billboards on Sunset and who was acting next to Will Smith for King Richard. And actually, Will Smith mentioned her name in his acceptance speech at the Oscars uh, right after slapping Chris Rock. And he mentions her name. And I'm going like, I have done scenes with that actress in Constance's class. And now Will Smith is mentioning her by name in his Oscar acceptance speech, and she is performing next to him in King Richard. I mean, it's just, you know, it's just a whole other, whole other ball game. I'm on a whole other level. So obviously, my mind is is a little torn right now between how much I love being back in Phoenix and how hard it is to live in LA. And yet, you know, nobody lives in LA because it's easy. They live in LA because it's Los Angeles, because it's Hollywood, because, you know, that's, that's where their dreams, their hopes and dreams potentially lie. So I'm really going to have to wrap my head around what that might look like. And, you know, I might need to ask for a little more help from uh, from the old God above to uh, really make that clear. Make sure it's not just, uh, you know, some sort of impulse. So, I don't know, dreamers. I don't know. I am just figuring this out as I go, which is why I am doing this podcast in the first place. Just so... Anybody out there who has a dream, whatever it is that you're going through or experiencing, while you're in the midst of it, it's really easy to already accomplish your dream and then look back in retrospect and then say, oh, well, that's what this meant. And, oh, well, I did this and I took these steps and I led these outcomes. But in in the moment when you were taking those steps or making those choices, you didn't know what the outcome would be. That's the part of it is we we have to make the risks, but you don't really know the outcome until after you made them. So, so we'll see, we'll see what, what shakes loose here, but man, just being back in Constance's class last night and being surrounded by her energy. And she is just, just a force of the universe, just a benevolent, powerful, connected, present, almost prophetic, um, human being and and it's just it's like when I'm around her I just it's like I feel like I can't fail it, it it's weird it's an interesting feeling just yeah when I'm around her it just feels like I can't fail it feels like my success and my dreams are inevitable and that's important to surround ourselves with those type of people so well everybody I uh, that's what I got for you today for March 13th 2024 as I release this I will be heading out to my film shoot to to film a uh, a uh, murder docu series type uh, show um, like a reenactment type show and I am very much looking forward to that And I hope all of you are doing fantastic, that all of your dreams are coming true. And I very much look forward to talking to you tomorrow. I'll let you know how the film shoot goes. Until then, I love you all so much. I hope your dreams are going well, and I will talk to you tomorrow.